Hey guys, welcome to another Blu-ray DVD collection release update video. This is the one for the month of August 2020. We've got an absolute box set bonanza for you guys today. We have so much to get into. I've got to get this intro done really quickly. We've got some amazing titles sent in from my good friends over at Shock Entertainment. We have just as many amazing titles sent in from my other good friends over at Viavision Entertainment. Some, some fantastic box sets there. And then we have like an itty bitty pile of stuff that I've bought like online and in sales and stuff recently that I've uh, added to the collection. Like I said, so much to get into, so without further ado, let's get into it. All right, so first up, we're gonna take a look at this amazing stack of stuff that's been sent over from my good friends over at Biovision Home Entertainment. Some amazing titles here, some great box sets and stuff. It is a great haul of stuff they've sent over to me this month. So I, uh, thanks again to, to my amazing friends over there. I really, really do appreciate it. So first up, I want to take a look at these ones. I don't want to spend too much time talking about these in depth because I am actually going to do a separate video on them. But Viavision have uh, released the second wave of their amazing imprint line. This is their boutique line of titles, uh, basically limited edition. Most of them, I think, have got runs of about 1,500. Uh, they come in these great slipcover packagings and loaded with fantastic like special features and all that kind of stuff on there. Uh, so this is their second wave of titles. Uh, they have released A Place in the Sun, which is a really, really fantastic movie. Um, uh, when Worlds Collide, another really great sci-fi film from the 1950s. They released War of the Worlds in the last wave. So that goes very, very nicely with that right there. Uh, this one here called No Way to Treat a Lady. I was very surprised with just how great this film was. It's one that I never really heard of before. It was completely off my radar, but Great, great film. Uh, Night Falls on Manhattan, which is a, a Sidney Lumet film, which stars um, Andy Garcia, Richard Dreyfuss. It's just like a whole great ensemble cast of characters, uh, of, of cast members there. And uh, one called The Carpet Bag is a really great 1960s sort of sprawling epic film, which I really loved. And how good is the cover on that? I think it's just some really fantastic. And of course, very briefly, they all do come with different artwork under the sleeve. As I said, I will be going over these ones in depth in another video because it's a really special range um, and I really do appreciate them sending these ones over so I'm going to take a look at them in, in depth if you're interested in that. Another great film release from Vibage and this month is The Sum of Us. This is an Aussie film from the early 1990s. It's got a very young Russell Crowe and Aussie icon Jack Thompson. This guy pops up in so many great Australian films. If you're not too familiar with Australian cinema you would recognise him as Clegg Lars from Star Wars Attack of the Clones. Check out little young Russell Crowe there. How cool is that? Uh, this is a really really fantastic movie. This is one I've wanted to see for a long time. It's finally given me a, a chance to check it out. Russell Crowe plays a young gay man and uh, his father is this rough and tumble Aussie bloke but their relationship is just so beautiful and just so touching and heartwarming and it kind of uh, places this, uh, this story in the socio-economical background of Australia I guess coming out of the 1980s, the early 1990s, still a very turbulent time for, for gay men around the world really, and sort of how the relationship of these two characters is affected by, by people from the outside, I suppose. Um, and it touches on a lot of themes that are touched, in, uh, touched on in today's media, but stuff that was very uncommon for movies back then. And I think this is a movie that is just so ahead of its time. This, along with this this and uh, Priscilla, Queen of the Desert, there was like this real push for this kind of media in Australian cinema back then. And I think, again, very, very ahead of its time. And I would highly recommend this film. It's such a beautiful, beautiful, touching movie. And really, anyone who is a fan of great, heart-touching cinema needs to check this movie out. Uh, fans of Australian cinema, fans of Russell Crowe, Jack Thompson, get on this movie. I cannot recommend this highly enough. Fantastic. Fantastic film. Another great film here is Meatballs. This one stars a very young Bill Murray in his very first starring role. This is a teen flick from the very late 1970s, but unlike most of the teen flicks of the 70s, like TNA flicks like Porky's and Animal House and uh, the Revenge of the Nerds films, this is like a real kind of tame, innocent teen flick. As you can see, it's got a PG rating there. Uh, it just says the content is mild in impact. So there's no nudity, there's no like gross out humor or, or any of that kind of stuff. It's just a very tame and innocent teen flick. And I think if you're into this kind of thing, it is a very interesting one to take a look at. I really enjoyed it. Didn't think it was hilarious. Not like over the top, like crazy funny, but it is funny, it's sweet, it's touching. I would recommend this film, it's a lot of fun. So uh, check that one out right there, Meatballs. 
We've got another great classic film collection here from Biovision. Of course, they are always putting out these fantastic uh, collections of uh, Golden Age stars. This month's one is Bob Hope. This is the collection from 1938 to 1946. Bob Hope did some really fantastic comedy films. Just really great, just sort of, um, as you'd imagine, like early 1940s humor which is like very vaudevillian it's very clever it's very cool it's very laid back there's uh 10 films in this collection right here that you can see listed right there i didn't get a chance to take a look at all of them but the ones that i did take a look at i thought were really really great i watched uh, give me a sailor thanks for the memories and uh ne and never say die i thought they were all really really good just t just enjoyable comedy movies that you can put on like in an afternoon and just just have a lot of fun with there's two in here the cat and the canary and the ghost breakers uh, they are actually going to be included in the next wave of the imprint titles so i can't wait to to check those ones out in uh, in full hd and of course this is like a 10 disc collection which has got all the movies right there uh if you're into this like early classic hollywood stuff and early comedy and uh, and all that you definitely got to check out some bob hope movie because he was an absolute master of his craft now the rest of these titles here are uh, television collections. These are all on Blu-ray. Firstly, we've got this series called Yellowstone starring the fantastic Kevin Costner. Those of you who've been following me on social media or Letterboxd or any of that stuff, you know that I've been on like a, this massive Kevin Costner kick recently. I discovered I had a bunch of Costner films in my collection that I'd never watched. And because they're like two and a half, three, four hour epic films, I just never allowed myself the time to watch them. And I finally went, you know, it's, it's time to watch them. So I've been on a kick of all these great Costner movies. And this has just released at like the perfect time for me because I've been on this Costner, Costner kick. This series, like this great television series starring Kevin Costner. I'd never seen it before. So this was a great chance to check it out. I've probably watched the first like eight episodes of this now and I'm really, really enjoying it. This box set here has the first two seasons in there. So that's season one right there and then season two right there as well. It's this really gritty Western drama. I guess if you had to compare it to anything, it's kind of like Dynasty um, or Dynasty, uh, but more modern and it's, it's focused on more modern themes more real world relatable kind of themes family dynamics you know trying to save the the farm from external forces uh from you know the, the land being bought by the government for whatever reason it's just very typical western themes but very much ingrained in the now and in modern society i think it's really fantastic it's got great drama all the performers are really really great in the series as well costner is fantastic plays this grumpy old man who owns the farm and is trying to keep his farm and his family safe again from these outside forces highly highly recommend this series right here i think there's a third season as well which obviously hasn't been issued um if you want to pick this up the only way to get it here in australia is um in this box set right here season one and two additionally now this is one that uh Biovision haven't sent into me this one i've had in my collection for a while so this isn't like their edition of it this is the original release of this but they have reissued this hatfields and mccoys on blu-ray i thought i'd just spotlight it right here i believe it has the exact same cover but some of the markings might be a bit different on the spine or whatever this this is a mini series, like a tally movie that uh, probably if, like 2012, a number of years ago now, it stars Kevin Costner and the late Bill Paxton. I watched this not long ago. I think this is actually what got me on my Kevin Costner kick. We watched this fantastic, fantastic um, historical Western drama about the Hatfield McCoy battle. If you don't know much about it, this is like these two families, real life families that were at war with each other in the old West. And um, it's definitely worth uh, checking out if you're a fan of Westerns and all that again. This is more of like a, uh, again, a historical Western compared to uh, Yellowstone which is more of like a modern day Western thing. But if you're into any of that kind of stuff, check out Hatfields and McCoys. Next up is another classic series from the 1990s. This is Sharp, the classic collection. Now this is a series that ran on ITV between the, I guess the 1990s and early 2000s. Um, but I think the ones that they made in the early 2000s aren't in this collection. This is just the 1990s films. There is uh, 14 films and like two specials included in there as well. I think the specials are sort of uh, like compilation things. This is a historical drama based in the Napoleon Wars. Sharp is a general, he's like, I guess he's a soldier 
who through the various uh, episodes or tally movies, these are all tally movies, um, he kind of rises through the ranks of the army. This is again the classic collection. It's got all 14 in there. So we've got these two uh, cases in here. I think the artwork on these are really, really beautiful and spread across there. As I said, the, the ones that were done in the 2000s aren't included in this set, uh, I guess because I think they I don't know if they were made by ITV or someone else made them, but I think I think the rights to them are with someone else. So I'm not sure if Viavision have been able to get the rights to those, uh, but they are available in the UK, I think, on Blu-ray. So that is something that I might look into importing if Viavision don't release them anytime soon. But I've checked out some of these. Looks fantastic. It's only something I've seen in passing over the years, uh, but the transfers on this is stellar. I mean, I've seen a lot of shows from the 1990s, especially British stuff, has not held up over the years. It looks terrible. The picture's all washed out, just really dirty, like muddy print. But this actually says that this is a, um, uh, it's a new mastering in HD from the original film negatives, which have been used to ensure the HD, uh, ultimate HD viewing experience. And it looks fantastic, like vibrant colors. They've expanded the, uh, the aspect ratio to 16.9. So these would have been filmed on 16 millimeter film in 16.9 but framed and cropped to 4.3 for television um, distribution. But now they've gone back to those original elements, expanded the aspect ratio. Uh, there's, it's very filmic, there's a lot of grain. I noticed a few instances of maybe a little bit of digital noise reduction, but it's nothing that's overly, like, nothing that's too heavy and nothing that is uh, too really that noticeable if, if you're not looking for that kind of thing. But very filmic, very cinematic series. So I'm looking forward to, to powering my way through that series. I think you should check that one out too if you're interested in that kind of historical BBC drama kind of stuff. Now this is one, oh my lord, I was so excited about. This is the Monty Python's Flying Circus complete series on Blu-ray. This was issued over in the uh, the UK last year from Network. Uh, so this is essentially the exact same release that was put over in the UK, just that the packaging's a little bit different. The one in the UK was a lot more lavish, like a huge box, it came with books and all this stuff. But this is more of a compact sort of thing that you can on your shelf. It's got the entire four series of the show in here of uh, Monty Python's Flying Circus. This is such a pivotal, um, influential comedy series, sketch series. There was never anything like it before it. There's been a lot of stuff like it after it, but nothing that really quite matched. Nothing that got anywhere near matching the sheer brilliance of the humor of these of these programs are amazing. Like you guys have probably all seen the great Monty Python films like Holy Grail and Life of Brian, Meaning of Life. This is where it all began. Transfers on this series, oh my Lord, gorgeous. I have grown up watching uh, Monty Python's Flying Circus my entire life. My dad, uh, old mate Rick, is a huge Monty Python fan. He, a fan. he grew up in that era, the 60s, the 70s where Monty Python were just so huge and they were still on television. So I've grown up my whole life watching Monty Python and watching the old, really crummy DVD transfers of this uh, classic series right here. And um, I mean, I have never ever seen this looking so good. It, again, this is a series where they've gone back to the original elements. Um, I believe the studio stuff was shot on tape. Uh, the location stuff was shot on 16 mil film. So there is like a bit of a variation between the different elements of it. So some of it looks better than other bits do, uh, but overall it looks fantastic. They have rescanned uh, Terry Gilliam's original animations from the 16 millimeter film in full eye def and they look just gorgeous, like glorious animated segments. Overall, this is like one of the greatest television remasters I have ever, ever seen in my life. And if you're a fan of Monty Python, if you're a fan of comedy, this is an essential box set. Like you need to go out and buy this box set because this is just, this is like a masterclass in great comedy, amazing. I thought this was brilliant. I'm gonna work my way through all of that as well. Fantastic stuff. One last big box set here from Viavision. I actually wasn't expecting them to send this one over because it is, as you can see right there, a very big lavish box set. So I really am appreciative of them for sending this one over. Thank you so, along with all the other amazing stuff there. So thank you so much. This is, um, of course, the 12 Monkeys Ultimate Collection. This is a uh, sci-fi television series based on the original Terry Gilliam film. Of course, Terry Gilliam, one of the Monty Python lads uh, who did all the animation and stuff on that series, uh, but a really great filmmaker as well. Uh, film fans 
will know him and will love his work. Uh, but so this is the series based on his film. The original film starred Bruce Willis and Brad Pitt. This box set, of course, includes all four series of the show and it also includes the movie in there as well. So this really is the ultimate collection. It's got 12 discs. It's limited to a thousand copies right here. It is exclusive here in Australia, as far as I'm aware. Um, but this is a really fantastic, big, beautiful, lavish box set. I'll give you a quick unboxing of it right here. Make sure nothing pops out. I really love this. Like, you've got a really great little image on the box right there. Um, you've got a disc of bonus features, which I believe are exclusive to this set right here. You've got this, which is a map. I really haven't watched a lot of the show, so I'm not too familiar with what this is. But it's a huge map that I'm assuming has some sort of enormous impact on the on the on the show. So in here you've got um, all four seasons of the show. You've got seasons one and two in there, and then uh, three and four in there as well. Uh, so that's a full series. I think the movie is in one of the season sets as kind of like a bonus disc. Uh, but yeah, I haven't checked out this really much. I, I took a look at a couple of, just skimmed through a few episodes. The transfers are fantastic. It looks really, really gorgeous. Just looks like this really dark, kind of gritty sci-fi adventure series, like action adventure. I'm not a huge fan on sci-fi uh, television that much, but this is something that really intrigues me and looks really, really good. And I think it is something that I will get stuck into. So I'm looking forward to checking that one out. This is a, as I said, really beautiful, box set and I think fans of the series will really appreciate this people who maybe haven't picked up all four seasons already or I'm a collector I know what it's like if you've got all four seasons and you love stuff like this you probably want to go and pick this one up anyway all right so next up we're going to take a look at this stack of titles from shock entertainment first up we'll take a look at the uh, new installments in their Hollywood gold series I just love the way these spines line up right here of course we've got some blu-rays there we've got some dvds as well we'll take a look at the blu-rays first uh firstly we've got two new Jerry Lewis films uh that have been released right here these go alongside like the other 11 or so that they have just released these I think these are just so much fun. Jerry Lewis is so much fun. Uh, this one here has Dean Martin in it as well. It's called Money From Home. Um, I feel like maybe I've just seen one too many of these now, but they all kind of starting to feel the same to me. I think it's the kind of films that's like you've seen one, you've seen them all, but you still enjoy them when you sit and watch them. Really good moments, really great comedy, but I feel like a lot of the gags in this are kind of recycled from some of the other movies, but I still had a lot of fun with this, and if you are a fan of these movies, I would recommend checking this one out. They get embroiled with gangsters, and there's all this stuff with money, having to owe money to gangsters and fixing a horse race and just all this fun, wacky screwball stuff. Um, again, worth checking that one out. And uh, this one here, Rocker by Baby. This is just a Jerry Lewis vehicle by himself. And I kind of, I, I, I love Dean Martin, but I feel like the movies Jerry Lewis did by himself opened up his creative freedom to kind of experiment and do different things and break ground and break the mold. This movie was so much fun. Um, he ends up looking after the, the babies of his ex-girlfriend's sister and just hijinks and shoe as you can see on the back just some crazy wacky screwball moments and um, the only thing I didn't really like about this is it, there's a lot of like really weird musical numbers and stuff in it a lot of these movies have music in them just randomly um, they're the only things that really pulled me out of the film but otherwise I think it's a really good Jerry Lewis film right there both of these I would recommend both very enjoyable movies um, the transfers on them are both just really gorgeous transfers on these films I didn't have any issues. We got two other Jerry Lewis ones right here. These are on DVD only. Unfortunately not released on Blu-ray. I don't know if uh, Shock Entertainment has any plans on releasing these on Blu-ray, but I really hope they do because these are fantastic movies. Uh, this one right here, The Caddy, is another one with Dean Martin in it. This is one of their earlier ones, so it's kind of more vaudevillian comedy style than kind of the later, wackier, zany films of their later movies, uh, but it is like a really enjoyable one. Um, the famous song, Dean Martin's famous song, That's Amore, was written for this picture. I never knew that. Uh, I thought that was actually quite a cool little thing to discover. Uh, but uh, Jerry Lewis plays like a uh, the son of a famous golfer. He's a really good golfer in his own right, but he gets shy in front of crowds, so ends up working as the caddy to Dean Martin's character and coaching him to win a golf tournament. 
Really, really good movie. I really enjoyed that. I think that's one that's definitely worth picking up. I thought even for a DVD, the transfer on this looked really, really nice. And this one right here, Cinderella, I would have to say is probably my favourite Jerry Lewis movie that I've seen so far, except for maybe The Nutty Professor. Oh, this was really, really enjoyable. It's charming, whimsical, fantastical, got really great fantasy elements in here. It's essentially a um, gender-bent version of the Cinderella story. He plays a guy named Fella, and um, he's got a wicked stepmother, but then also got these two wicked stepbrothers, and there is a big ball at the end where he has to win over the princess with his... Um, Fairy, fairy godfather in tow who's played by the fantastic uh, really great comedian Ed Wynn really love this movie I thought it was fantastic this is definitely definitely one you got to pick up transfer on it again for a DVD is really great and I highly enjoyed this movie I hope it is headed to Blu-ray because I think this would look really beautiful in HD we've got a bunch of John Wayne titles entering the uh, Hollywood Gold series collection here as well one of them is on Blu-ray it is the man who shot Liberty Valance this is pretty much my favorite John Wayne film of all time and that's certainly helped by the fact that it's got uh, James Stewart in there as well, who is my one of my favourite actors. Also stars Lee Marvin too and Vera Miles. It's directed by John Ford, who is a legend of the Western genre. This is just your typical early 1960s Western film. You know, the lone gunman walks into a lawless town and it's the gunman against the sheriff and there's big shootout and all this just really great stuff. Great lines have come out of the film. If you've seen the Family Guy sketch where Peter thinks he's John Wayne and he walks around calling everyone Pilgrim. Hey Pilgrim, what you doing Pilgrim? That all comes from the man who shot Liberty Valance. I just think it's a great movie and uh, this has been issued on Blu-ray before from Paramount but it has been reissued by Shock Entertainment on the Hollywood Gold series. We've got another John Wayne Western here. This one's called Three Texas Steers. Um, it's, a, it's from a series of Western matinees called The Three Mes Mesketeers. Uh, they kind of rotated the, uh, the, the cast in there uh, throughout the films. John Wayne did a number of them, I think probably seven of them or so. There was like, uh, like 40 or 50 movies from The Three Mesketeers tears uh series. They're B, B movie westerns that were made for matinee so Sunday afternoon movie they would have been played alongside cartoons and stuff. Only runs for 15 minutes. It's not a great film but it is an interesting one to check out if you're into your western films, into classic cinema. Just to check out what like an old matinee film is about. It's got a bit of comedy in there, it's got a bit of action, it's got a bit of drama, it's got a bit of romance, it's got a guy in a gorilla suit, it's got a talking ventriloquist dummy. It's really got everything that was just made to entertain everyone. Adult children again a very easy disposable 50 minute film but I had fun with this and I think it is one worth checking out again if you're interested in the history of that kind of film and we have three other John Wayne picks here these are not westerns so these are a lot of fun this is John Wayne's probably 90% of his over 100 films are, are western movies but occasionally he did break the mold and do a, a, a few other things on the side this one right here Hatari this is like an action adventure movie epic that was shot out in Africa it's a kind of picture that would never ever be made today it's about a bunch of guys and a couple of gals who are um, big game hunters in Africa they don't go out and kill or hunt and shoot the animals they're capturing them to send to zoos so I think in some respect, yeah, there's like a, a bit of a morality issue with the movie. Um, but if you just appreciate it for its time, a lot of these old movies you have to watch and appreciate for their time. Um, there are a lot of sequences. Most of the movie is made up of sequences of them capturing animals. Real, wild animals are being captured by John Wayne on film. Like it's some of the craziest thing you'll ever see. They didn't use stuntmen or anything. It's the actors out there in Africa capturing wild animals and I think it's just one of those things that again would just never be made today and is just so just a curious film to just check out um the cinematography and everything the way it's filmed is really beautiful like really gorgeously filmed movie um it's very long it goes for like two and a half hours which is far too long for the film they essentially didn't have a script they went out and filmed all these sequences of John Wayne and a bunch of actors capturing animals and then tied it together with a loose narrative it's a film that would never be made today, but it is an interesting relic of its time that is definitely worth checking out if you're interested. Um, we've got two here which are kind of from John Wayne's, what I called his aviation pictures. He did like four or five aviation films. He did a bunch of war movies as well. And these are two of the aviation ones. The High and the Mighty, this is one that goes for two and a half hours as well. 
I didn't think it was particularly that great. I didn't really enjoy it that much. Um, this is a disaster movie where the plane is about to crash and John Wayne has to take over as captain and save all the people on board. Uh, most of the film, I think John Wayne's probably only in it for like 45 minutes, which is a little bit of a disappointment to me. And the disaster part of the movie is only like the last half an hour or so. The rest of the movie, you kind of get to know the people who are on board and their, their, their lives, their history leading up to this fateful flight. Light. So you get an idea of everyone's on board and gives like this real hu human element to this disaster story. Again, it's interesting because this is one of the very first disaster flicks that was like this. It spawned movies like the Airport series and um, Airplane or Flying High. The spoof movies were really took a lot from um, the, the High and the Mighty. So it's interesting to take a look at for that respect, historically, but again, I didn't think it was a really great movie. That I didn't think it was a really fantastic movie. Um, Island in the Sky, however, I thought this was really good. John Wayne is a captain of a, of, a, of a plane, and they crash in the middle of the wilderness, in the snow, in the cold, and a bunch of, um, of uh, pilots have to come out and try and save them. It's a really great film about the human spirit and humanity and people getting along under really, really dire circumstances circumstances. I really enjoyed this one. I thought this was just a very nice uh, a nice film, enjoyable, some good, uh, not really action sequences, but I guess like adventure sequences in here. Um, it's, a, it's a shorter film, it goes for about an hour and a half, and John Wayne's performance in this is really great. I mean, you see a lot of his westerns, he's just phoning in his performance, because it's the same thing over and over and over again. He's done the same movie a hundred times over, but then when he actually like does a movie like this, which is a bit different, he actually like stretches his acting ability. You can see how much a really fantastic performer he was, uh, but I really enjoyed that. Look, the transfers on all of these are really great for, for, for DVDs. Uh, they are, I believe, the exact same port as the old Paramount issues of these. Uh, they've got all the same special features and stuff on there, as you can see on the back of that one. So like the Leonard Moulton introduction and all the behind the scenes features and stuff like that. Um, Hatari is actually one that has been issued on Blu-ray before. Here in Australia, the Blu-ray is, is terrible, like a really terrible Blu-ray transfer. I compared it to the DVD. The DVD is actually slightly better. So if you want to check out that movie, I'd just say pick up the DVD. Um, none of these have, I don't think, been issued anywhere in on Blu-ray yet and probably won't be I don't think so if you're interested in checking them out I would go and pick them up uh, right now and, and take a look at them. Now we've got two box sets to take a look at here from Shock we'll begin with this one a great series from the 1960s this is one my dad actually grew up with he absolutely loved this series one of his favorites of all time it's called My Three Sons you guys know I love my classic series um, but um, I have watched a, a few episodes of this uh, from, from the DVD set now to take a look at it and I've seen bits of it over the years it's so fun. It's such an enjoyable, wholesome show. It's got Fred McMurray in there, who you'd probably recognise from some great uh, early 60s Disney films, like The Shaggy Dog and uh, the, the original Flubber movies, Absent Minded Professor and Son of Flubber. He is so much fun, and he's really great in this series as well. He's a single father who has a family with three sons, and his uh, old man lives there with them as well, the grandfather, and just the family dynamics thing. It's really great. I think it's a very innovative show for the time as well. Uh, the time... You you know, back then it would have been all about the nuclear family, the the father and the mother and the the daughter and the and the son and um, probably grandma and grandpa living there as well. But this is something that just completely turns that um, that uh, that formula. Uh, on its head and really flips it again. It's this family of guys living together and navigating life together and their loves and their relationships and all that stuff. And the few episodes I've seen is just so much fun. Like really great, just charming, heartwarming show that is legitimately funny, really great comedic moments. The show ran for 12 years, I believe, from 1960 to 1972. Um, this box set right here, even though there's so many discs in there, it's uh, just the first four seasons. I believe only the first five have only ever been issued in the States, so I'm not too sure what that means for Shock's box sets, whether they're going to do any more, whether they've got the rights to any more of the seasons. I'd really love to see that. I mean, all it would take is three box sets to complete the whole series right there, but yeah, really good. And these look gorgeous. I mean, the transfers on these look fantastic. I've seen enough classic TV both on TV and on DVD to know how bad these can look. Like, a lot of these old shows just were not looked after very well over the years. Terrible transfers and the uh, like the, the film elements were just completely destroyed, not really looked after that well. These have been digitally remastered and they just look gorgeous. Really, really fantastic transfers. If you're a fan of classic TV, you haven't seen this, pick it up because I highly recommend it. Really, really good show. And one final title here from Shock. 
Oh man, I was so excited to see them release this and so excited for them to send it over to me. The Incredible Hulk, the complete series. This is of course the 70s series of the Hulk starring Bill Bixby as David Banner, not Bruce Banner. They changed the name for some reason. I can't remember why. I can't remember why, but they changed the name to David Banner and Lou Ferrigno is the Hulk. Really, really great. Now this includes the entire five seasons of the show, as you can see on the back there, and it includes the original pilot episode, which was a movie, movie length tally movie. So this has the movie in there, you can see right there, it says it uh, includes the movie. Um, and uh, of course, all four seasons of the show. This is just a really schlocky, campy superhero show from the 70s, early 80s. Like, kind of like, it's very similar to the old Batman series and just how corny and cheesy it is. Kind of spawned from that same era. But it is actually a really great show. It's got some really great dramatic moments, really good performances. Even though it is really cheesy, it does have some good performances in there. And it is a legitimately enjoyable show. And it's something that I have watched a lot. Growing up, I used to watch this on like the classic TV channels. I'm so happy to finally be able to have it on, um, on home media. And this set is fantastic. I mean, look at the, the individual individual cases there. Uh, so I don't believe these have been released as individual sets. You do have to buy them as a box set. Um, but yeah, look, I, I looked at these. Transfers are really good and even better than I ever remember them looking on television. Again, I don't remember them ever looking really that nice, but these have been cleaned up very, very well. The only thing I can say it doesn't include is the two tally movies that followed the series, kind of like in the late 80s which was The Return of the Incredible Hulk, or the, the, uh, the Incredible Hulk Returns, or something like that, and The Trial of the Incredible Hulk uh, as well, isn't included in these, this set. But that's okay, because you've got the whole series there and the original movie, and I do hope, I'm not sure if they will be, but I do hope Shock somehow gets the rights to distribute those uh, final two tally movies as well to complete that collection right there. That is it for all the titles that have been sent in to me from the distributors this month. Really, really great stuff and a lot of stuff that I do recommend going and picking up. Uh, but now we'll just close off this video, just take a very small look at a couple of titles that I've picked up in sales online. Again, been on a Kevin Costner kick. I had to pick this one up. It stars the late Kelly uh, Preston as well. Uh, Amazon put this down to like 12 bucks. This is a movie I wanted to see for a very long time. Imported it on the Amazon Australia Global Store. So from Amazon US. Look, this is a movie I wanted to pick up for a long time and I just had to pick it up um, and I loved it. This is a really, really beautiful film. Again, I just, I, I'm a big fan of the Kevin Costner works and uh, this is just one of his like sappy love films uh, that is like embroiled in the world of sport as well. Um, this one I had to pick up as well, Spartacus, classic Kirk Douglas movie. This is a great epic, like four hour epic film. Uh, has just been issued on 4K, so I had to pick this one up as well. One of my absolute favorite classics, one of my favorite uh, classic epics especially, and Kevin, Co uh, Kevin Costa, Kirk Douglas in this movie is just spectacular. So I haven't checked that one out just yet, but I'm looking forward to having a look at that when I get a chance. I've had, I've been very busy looking at all this stuff from uh, Shock and Via Vision the last couple of weeks. Um, I got the last DreamWorks title that I need to get into the collection. This is Joseph King of Dreams. Um, this is like their only straight to DVD movie I believe they've, they've ever made. Um, and it doesn't look great, but this was down in price as well, like I think 15, probably too much that I probably should have spent on it. But it's the last DreamWorks one I need and I'm probably gonna be watching all the DreamWorks movies very, very soon for a particular reason that we'll divulge into at a later date. I'm pretty sure you can probably figure out what that is. So I've got all the DreamWorks movies. I'm gonna work my way through all of those. Um, I'm kind of looking forward to that. I've got two more animated titles here. I imported this one from Wow HD. This cost me, I think, $19, down from like $35 or $40, which was the usual price. This is the Tom and Jerry Golden Collection Volume 1. They have just reissued this. This is something that came out a while ago, but it's just been reissued as part of the Warner Archive line. Um, so I've been just kind of watching the price on that, waiting for that one to drop down in price. It's got 37 classic remastered Tom and Jerry shorts. So I'm trying to bulk up my animated collection collection, especially classic titles. So I jumped on that as soon as I saw that go down to 19. And this one right here, I picked up on Amazon. This was $42, I think. Something that I've been waiting to go down in price. Uh, disappointingly, doesn't have a slipcover. I think it came in a slipcover in Australia, but I could be wrong. I'm sure I've seen it in a slipcover. I know the artwork like online actually shows it in a slip. I don't know if it ever actually did come out in one, but I'm sure I've seen it in one. Let me know, did this come out in a slipcover in Australia? Because I do want to try and track it down. If you've got a copy of this with a slip and you don't want to slip, please let me know. You can send it over to me. I would be, I would be in your debt because I have the um, original Batman animated series which come in that beautiful box, that slip box, and I just would like them to look so nice together on the, on the, on the, uh, on the shelf there. But 
Otherwise, great series. I love this growing up, as I did the animated series, and I'm so happy to get that into my collection as well. Slipcover, all no slipcover, really is all about the show, and I'm sure it's gonna look absolutely beautiful. But that, guys, that is it. We've taken a look at a lot of stuff here. Uh, once again, thank you so much to my amazing friends over at Via Vision Home Entertainment and Shock Entertainment for sending in really an amazing amount of stuff. Uh, I mean, I, uh, I'm blown away by the generosity and I just, I really do appreciate it. So thank you so much for that. And I uh, thank you guys out there for watching me talk about DVDs and Blu-rays and stuff <laughs> like crazy. If you do like to hear me talking just random stuff, I am of course launching the Dave Lee Down Under podcast this very week. And I'd really love you to tune, tune into that. You can hear that on all the podcast platforms, Apple Music, Spotify, uh, Google Music, uh, Google Podcasts. I'll also be loading the video version of that on YouTube as well. Patrons uh, will get two-day early access to the video version of the podcast before it launches on any other platform. So if you consider uh, supporting me for as little as a dollar a month to get early access to that and other stuff as well, that will be fantastic. But look, guys, otherwise, I don't expect that. I do just really appreciate you joining me for these videos. And uh, until next time, guys, please continue to stay safe. Take it easy. I'll see you next time. If this is your first time viewing one of my videos and you'd like to see more like it in the future, then please don't forget to hit that big old subscribe button up on your screen, as well as that like button down below for that little extra support. Also, don't forget to check me out on social media, and please consider supporting me over on Patreon. Thanks for watching, and have a fantastic day.